by Socialite Approved. When we come back, we'll be talking about the small business spotlight of the month. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So Eli, can you tell me a little bit more about your company? Care to Manage is a company that helps families with an aging loved one, and we help coordinate care. We help families organize the healthcare information as well as find resources in the community that they would need to be able to better care for their loved one. How in the world did you come up with a business as complex as that? It's really a lot more simple than it sounds. Um, I, first of all, I have been in the business of social work or caring for someone else uh, pretty much for 15 years. Uh, I managed a retirement program for developmentally disabled adults and, um, and enjoyed it very much. But as a result, I was constantly working with families, constantly advocating for the um, loved one and uh, it just kind of became part of who I am. Uh, culturally, my background is Iranian, and we tend to uh, put a lot of importance and priority on family. And caring for your grandparents or aunts and uncles is just a part of family. Last year, we started serving our first customers and clients, and um, we've been rolling ever since, and it's pretty much referral-based. So most startups tend to stay in their own little categories. They're either tech, they're either social, they're either food. What made you decide to blend that in into one model for care to manage? Well, we didn't blend in food. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. Uh, now, the reason that, um, yes, I believe care to manage would be a very viable company if we stayed local and kept it as a concierge um, service, for example. Uh, I also believe that the technology is robust enough to stand on its own. However, when you're talking about caring for mom, I assure you, you cannot fully automate that. There's too much emotion involved and people care too much. Sure. And there's just absolutely, I believe with all of my being and my heart that it needs to be a blended model because you can't fully automate caring for mom. Is this something only open to the elderly or can someone like myself or the people that are watching use? Well, initially, we are going to offer this to caregivers that are caring for aging loved ones. Eventually, we hope to be able to have it open to everybody. Uh, the reason we're doing it in steps is because of resources. We have to focus and you know, be a little bit more um, deliberate about the kind of resources that we research and make sure that they're, you know, good to offer for families. Yeah. Right, right. Well, that sounds really exciting. Um, the biggest focus is about how this kind of ties into economic development for the city. Sure. Yeah. So why is it that you believe that people decide to spend, I don't know, to Walmart, spend their money in Walmart when they, can, when they can go to the local farmer's market, in your opinion, as a business owner? Well, I can't explain why they go to Walmart. I haven't been to Walmart in years. Wow. <laughs> so, so you I are buy local. Okay. Yeah. How has that experience been for you? Well, I love buying local. I know most of, you know, like the people that I shop from, I know. Um, even restaurants, I, I don't hardly ever go to any kind of chain restaurant. I always go to restaurants where I either know the chef, know the cook, whatever. Um, I think that for the community to grow, we need to help it grow. And the money 
that is poured into the economy of a city or community is basically bound to come from the community right. and it just needs to continue to circulate and just regenerate and and just keep keep going so um i i'm i'm always very excited to know that big businesses are coming to memphis because it brings more jobs and it brings more attention to memphis which is a good thing because it brings those people to memphis so they can pour more money into right. our economy however it's important that that money stay in memphis <laughs> So that's that's kind of I'm hoping you know it's great that IKEA is coming, but I hope that you know a lot of the money kind of stays in Memphis. Right, right. I couldn't have said it better myself. So if I were interested in finding out more information about your company, Care to Manage, how can I access that? Um, we're in development on the website, mm -hmm. so um, you can call me. Actually, uh, we have a Twitter handle. It's at Care to Manage, and it's the number two. And we also have a Facebook page. It's also Care to Manage with the number two. And um, you can email me at ela at caretomanage.org, also the number two. And should I say the number? We'll, we'll just keep your number. Right. Yeah, I think we have enough with the Facebook. Right. We'll be sure right. to post all of the Facebook links and Twitter handles in the blog. You stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to Buy Ethnic TV. I'm Leslie Smith, your host. And one of the things that's important for us to know is where we currently stand economic wise. And so that's why we're here at the Economic Development Growth Engine. We're here with Reed Delbarger, who is the CEO and President over Edge. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Oh, it's a real pleasure. Um, so, as a tax paying citizen, um, we hear so much information about the media as to where we currently stand. And it's contradicting in a sense. Can you tell us from Edge's perspective where we currently stand? Certainly. So the city of Memphis and Shelby County had a rough going through the last recession. We lost as a county about 40,000 private sector jobs. We've made back about a third of those. So it's been a slow recovery for our community. Uh, a number of those jobs that we lost really are not coming back. And what we're seeing here is natural growth taking over. From our perspective, we have settled back into the kind of slow growth pattern that the community has seen off and on for about the last 10 to 15 years. And what's important for this community is to continue to nurture those things that are working for us today, but really ramp up our efforts so that we can see additional growth. We can capitalize better on the assets we have. So we're creating more jobs, better jobs, and we're uh, facilitating local citizens filling those jobs. You mentioned we would have to step up our efforts to kind of ramp up that growth. What are some ways that we as taxpaying citizens can do that? And so when we look at what we need to do to reignite our economy, we need to reverse some of those trends. So we need to be, we need more companies that are able to sell outside of our metro area, outside of our state, outside of our country, and bring those dollars back into our community. Uh, that takes a level of skill in terms of identifying markets and putting together deals that are more difficult than the ones we may be used to. It means it puts a premium on starting new businesses in those kinds of activities that can sell outside communities. We all love new restaurants, and I am first and foremost among those, but uh, and new restaurants have their place as an economic development tool, but we really need companies that are selling outside our market, bringing dollars back in. Is there any, any programs that you guys have that are pre-existing that is designed to help ethnic or minority businesses? Absolutely. The, first and foremost, all the recipients of our payment in lieu of tax, our pilot incentive, are required to commit to purchases by city certified women and, my, women and minority owned firm and county certified locally owned small businesses. Since Edge has been in existence, which dates back to the end of 2011, so not that long ago, but it's, during that period of time, the companies for whom we have approved pilots have committed over $350 million to purchases from those groups. Um, Obviously, a very substantial amount. Now, those purchases will occur across the life of the pilots. 
They average about nine years in length. Some are shorter, some are a little bit longer. Um, but that is a substantial amount of funding. And uh, the Edge Board, at its meeting last week, looked at changes to its pilot policies, one of which was to strengthen that program even further. We also have loan programs uh, for lo small local businesses, including a program that we run in conjunction with the City of, of Memphis and Memphis City Council, which we call the ICED program, I-C-E-D, Inner City Economic Development, and it is intended to uh, provide facade forgivable loans, grants, for uh, inner city for companies, retail firms, other commercial uh, companies that are serving neighborhoods throughout our more challenged parts of the city. And so, yeah, EDGE is very involved in helping locally owned minority and women owned firms. Okay, that's good. Are there any um, new projects coming down the pipe in the next five or 10 years um, outside of the Greater Memphis Alliance that EDGE is uh, working with? Well, we're working on a number of initiatives uh, that are related to the uh, regional Economic Development Plan that includes expanding export uh, assistance. This market sees uh, about $11 billion a year of product and service exported. And we do that with very little actual assistance to the companies that are doing it. And so uh, we know that if we can provide even a modest amount of uh, additional assistance, we can see that number grow. And that number translates into jobs uh, for our people. We're also looking at a biologistics uh, initiative. Uh, we're working with the what we call an innovation district up in the medical center. So a little bit of low-hanging fruit there. You have thousands and thousands of jobs located there, all types of jobs, from, from literal brain surgeons to the folks who keep the facilities moving. You also have thousands of students at the UT Health Science Center and Southwest Tennessee Community College, all in a pretty uh, concentrated area. And yet, we don't see much in that neighborhood in terms of urban vitality, let alone uh, economic innovation, new products, et cetera. And so uh, there's an initiative coming through the Regional Economic Development Plan and also assisted by the High Foundation to really begin to take advantage of these assets we already have. So you're going to see a number of new initiatives from EDGE, from our partner organizations, to really move the city forward. One thing that we know for sure, economic development is a team sport. We, we play our role, we try to do it well, we try to do more today than we did yesterday. Uh, but we work with some wonderful partner organizations who help as much or more, and together we move the city forward. I love that quote, together we move the city forward. If I wanted to learn any information about the programs that you shared with us, sure. how can I access that information? Well, easiest way is, Edge has a website with a phenomenal amount of information on it. And that's. Uh, growth-engine.org. Uh, the Economic Development Plan has its own uh, website, which is uh, metromethasplan.com. Uh, in addition, you can sign up to be on the EDGE distribution list, and we will gladly share with you all the information uh, for upcoming projects. Everything our board gets, we distribute to four or 5,000 of our nearest and dearest friends throughout the region. Transparency is a hallmark of this organization, and so we push a lot of information out. The Pulse is our monthly e-newsletter that has a synopsis of what our board does and highlights the activities that staff are working on. So there is a lot of information. If you go to uh, growth-engine.org, our, our primary website, just sign up to be on our distribution list, and really you will know what we're all about. All right, there you have it, straight from the CEO and president of EDGE, we'll be back with more.